Okay, so that's why us as citizens, the six, six petitioners, have to go to court now. Opponents of the 30-meter telescope are gearing up for the next court battle, which they say could halt the construction of the billion-dollar observatory on Mauna Kea. Six plaintiffs have filed an opening brief in their case in the Third Circuit Court, challenging the Board of Land and Natural Resources' decision to grant the University of Hawaii, on behalf of TMT, a permit to construct one of the world's largest telescopes on the northern plateau of the Mauna Kea summit area. Mauna Kea is sacred. It continues to be sacred. And we as practitioners are here to inform the BLNR that if it is allowed and if the TMT is built, it will infringe not only on our rights as Native Hawaiians, but the whole public's rights to enjoy Mauna Kea fully and to enjoy all of the aspects from the open space to the visual planes to all of those things that are all protected under state and county law. Plaintiffs include organizations Mauna Kea Aina Ho, Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, and also individuals, including Deborah J. Ward, Kalani Flores, and Pua Case, Clarence Kukawa Kahi Ching, and Kumuhula Paul Nevis. The plaintiffs have been consistent in their criticism that the land board has abused the public trust, failing to uphold their own rules governing Hawaii's sensitive conservation districts. The eight criteria, how about uh, the view plane, how about destruction of cultural sites and saying no, it won't. That's eight acres. Eight acres will be cemented. That eight criteria, couldn't believe it actually. The, the eight criteria are most important. The other side is arguing that if the eight criteria were followed to a T, that there would be no telescopes on the mountain. I think that is the proper story to tell. Uh, it, we, we shouldn't have wall-to-wall -wall telescopes. It should be a rare thing, and we have too many of them up there. As they proceed forward with this permit, it's really a violation of our constitutional protections for Native Hawaiians. It's also a violation of our public trust doctrine. And it's, this project is just going to cause substantial adverse impacts. Flores went before the Office of Hawaiian Affairs in Hilo last week, making his case against the development of the mountain. There's, there's many manau about the 30-meter telescope. And I'm just going to tell it as it is. If you, in order to get a permit to, to construct something in a conservation district, yet you have to meet eight criteria. There's no way that project can meet the eight criteria, yet it's been passed through. And we know it's political, there's a lot of politics with it. We know there's a lot of business pushing it. And we know there's a lot of people from outside Hawaii pushing it. There's a lot of money from outside Hawaii pushing this project. I just want to show you one thing, how it cannot meet the, the criteria. I can go, I don't want to go through all of it. I'm just going to show you one thing. The size of this telescope, it's not like any of the, the telescopes up there. It's over 18 stories tall. We don't even have a building on this island 18 stories tall. We don't even have a building on Kauai 18 stories tall or on Maui. How can you say that's not an impact? The, 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 it's over 18 stories. We have a law in, in this county of Hawaii that only allows certain buildings in the commercial and resort area in Hilo to, at 12 stories. The rest of the island, you cannot build that at all. How can the, the, the BNR allow that to happen on the, on the mountain? There's something wrong. Just to put perspective how big it is. So we all, we all, I'll give you a reference. We all know what the state capital looks like, right? If you put the TMT next to the state capitol, it's almost twice as high as the state capitol. And if you go down Punchbowl, and you look at it from the Punchbowl side, the dome is going to be just as wide as the, as the state capitol. That's what's being proposed on the Mauna. The plaintiffs have been raising funds for litigation through Kahea's Mauna Kea Legal Defense Fund for more than two years, but apparently more funds are needed. Flores pointed to a possible revenue source under OHA's control. According to a report made to the state legislature, OHA is supposed to be getting a 20% cut of the proceeds set aside by the university from tours conducted on Mauna Kea. 
The Mauna Kea Land Special Fund took in $407,468 in 2012. Of that, $81,494 was set aside for OHA. The report also noted that the cumulative set aside for OHA is $388,416. Maybe the plaintiffs could tap into that money to pay for what they say is the defense of the sacred mountain. OHA's Board of Trustees seemed sympathetic to Flores. At a prior meeting, the board voted to support a resolution relating to the protection of Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices and sacred sites, especially those on Mauna Kea. I really like to and thank and mahalo the board for taking up the resolution and passing it regarding this. Unfortunately, the, the BNR didn't heed or basically ignored the resolution, ignored aspects of protection of Native Hawaiian rights and practices. And in essence, as they proceed forward with this permit, it's really in violation of our constitutional protections for Native Hawaiians. Hawaii Island trustee Robert Lindsay instructed OHA CEO Dr. Kamanaopono Crab to look into the possibility. Meanwhile, TMT is moving ahead with the project. The corporation is requesting proposals from qualified engineering companies to provide engineering support services. It's a competitive procurement effort. The plaintiffs have also raised concern that the TMT project has begun test drilling and bulldozing of the road to the telescope site.